623. So our, our, the U.S. power grid, uh, you may know that it's not very secure. Well, now a new report from the uh, Congressional Research Service says that there's an increasing number of hackers that are affecting it and, and installing all kinds of uh, malware into the uh, into the grid. Uh, Mark Gelati is a cybersecurity expert at USACI.com. Uh, Mark, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. Yeah, USACI, what, what do you guys do there? We were a, um, a security company that deals with the um, energy sector, but we also deal with banks and everything around firewall security. Mm-hmm. And what, uh, so you deal directly with the energy sector, you're saying? Yes, I've been, I've been working in the energy sector for the last 25 years. Okay, and how on top of their uh, cybersecurity are they then? They're pretty on top. I mean, they've kind of uh, stretched the truth wall on, on what the people can hack into. The way um, SCADA works, it's actually SCADA, that's the technology that runs the, um, the grid, uh, SCADA stands for Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition. Mm-hmm. That's just all that means is a fancy word for it. It has its own uh, what's called protocol to access all of the remote devices that are around the country that tells you, like if you're uh, using it for gas, natural gas, it tells you when to turn the valve on, turn it off, increase the pressure, lower the pressure. And, and, it, and, it's, and it's one kind of uh, what software that everyone uses, or what is SCADA? Well, there's, there's about um, at least a dozen companies in the country mm-hmm. that, that wrote their own type of product. And, um, and it allows so, basically employees to remotely kind of uh, make changes on the grid, that kind of thing? Correct. And that grid is on its own network. It's not part of the worldwide network. It is on a private network. The PCs are not attached to both, mm-hmm. and so like like uh, where I used to work and manage the uh, SCADA for a natural gas pipeline company, mm-hmm. we had a PC that was on SCADA. The company employee had another PC that was on the internet to get to their emails and get to their office products, but the two never touched each other. Okay, you're saying so that that is the case for all all these major utilities that they, there is no actual access into their uh, private network. Supposed to be the way it's set up. I mean, that's, that's a regulation from what's called the FERC, Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. Okay. That's part of the requirement. Is SCADA is completely separated from the from the internet. So now, what did, could happen, does, go ahead. Well, what could I mean? My question is: do, do hackers have any way of actually getting onto these onto these SCADA so, systems? Pretty pretty slim. I mean, what what could happen is is I'm an operator. I'm on my PC that's in the on the regular email. You're not supposed to do this. I could plug a USB drive in, download a file, take it over, and plug it into my SCADA PC mm-hmm. and upload it. If there's malware on that USB drive, then that malware get on a PC. Most companies have controls around that and don't allow that. Well, now, would it take one disgruntled employee to do this then to, to kind of affect well, this? Go ahead. Yeah, the, the bigger issue is, is not can somebody from China hack into your grid and, and get, cause chaos. The bigger question is can they have an internal person mm-hmm. that's been there for years who's really a mold and then they decide to go and uh, shut down a power grid now again you're talking about from an electrical standpoint shutting down a power grid we were shut down uh, on the east coast mm-hmm. for quite a while uh, during that one day and it you know called a lot of havoc it's hap- now wh- it's- why do you think uh, i mean do you think we have that happening out there right now where there are employees that may have this kind of a thing in mind who knows? Nowadays, I mean, I can't believe that some 21-year-old kid would, would walk into a church and shoot a bunch of people. I mean, True. it's hard to tell that with this whole new generation of children out there, but Tell me this, of the cascading, because I think part of the, the, the major outage we had years ago there, there was a kind of a, uh, it was described as a cascade of, uh, that went throughout several networks. It could... If someone gets in on one of these grids, can they actually do that and take down in, in a permanent way other grids? No, there's there's six there's six places in the country that they would all have to knock all those down at the exact same time to cause a blackout that would that would you know uh, on, on a TV movie you would see the lights go out from the mm-hmm. uh, east coast to the west coast right and it goes across the nation and the, the whole world is dark and all that. The only way that can happen in reality is. Is somebody has to hit these six spots at the exact same moment, knock them all down, call a power surge, and, and then the whole network will have to reset itself. Right. So you're, they, when you're t- saying these six locations, you mean physically somehow hit them in a way like to put an explosive there, that kind of thing? Either hit them physically or 
somebody is in those control facilities and they all simultaneously at the same time do the do the uh, do something to cause the grid overload. I gotcha. Tell me this. Are you saying that really the, there shouldn't be too much concern about the at this point the, the state and security of the grid? Are you saying it, it is secure in your mind? I think it's. I mean, are some of the smaller utility companies maybe not following all of the rules that are supposed to be followed? Probably. Could could West Texas lose its electricity because they decide they're not following the rules? Yeah, maybe. But uh, but can the whole country lose the network? No, I don't think that's reality. Um, we could have the same thing we had uh, on the East Coast where. It went dark. New York City was dark for for many hours. Right. You know, um, because of a because of a human error. So yeah, that could happen. The bigger thing is is having someone attacking the grid physically, either by by uh, destroying certain substations that will that will black out a part of the region, or um, employees that are really moles that decided, okay, today's the day we're going to cause the havoc. I see. But but really, in terms of the setup, you say that the, the the actual software dealing with the grid is not in any way connected to the World Wide Web. There's no interconnection there. There is no Internet connection. Yeah. There's not supposed to be an Internet connection. I called um, three or four of my um, buds that, are, that work at large energy firms, and they uh, yesterday verifying this, and they all said the same thing. Oh no, no, there's no way anybody can do it in our environment because um, our PCs aren't even on the same network. Right. They're not even on the same physical network. It's every piece of the network is completely separated. Right. Well, the, the switches, the routers, lines, everything. Everything. Well, and that is that's why we have to trust people. Ultimately, the only way to go about it. Uh, Mark Gelati, cybersecurity expert. Find him at usaci.com. That's usaci.com. Mark, thank you so much for your uh, insight. You bet. Thank you, sir. Six thirty. When we come back, we will uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the impact here in Michigan of this uh, big Supreme Court ruling on the Affordable Care Act and uh, how things are going with the enrollment numbers here in Michigan, just uh, where we are, and uh, also a, a Lansing perspective on the South Carolina shooting. That's all next.